Hello, people. We start our open day now. I'm Anya Horish from Moscow. And I am Laura from Bulgaria. And we are uh, organizers and producers of this open day for Type Media for today. Uh, we are very excited to uh, to be here and to present you all the studios. Uh, and we have some short program for today. So we'll start from showing the Type Media Studio. Um, then we will talk a bit about the Contrast Studio, uh, the revival, coding, uh, stone carving, expansion and responsive uh, form studies, and uh, type and language, and uh, design theory. And after that, we're going to have a small break and we will continue with the Q&A session where you can ask your questions and uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, teachers will join us for that, maybe. We'll see. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we have to do it online this year again, but um, I think it's a good possibility for people from other countries also join us. Um, let's start from showing the Type Media Studio. OK. Maybe first. You can say something about um, yourself. OK. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, this is Borian speaking. And Leah. And we're going to present you the studio we spend most of our time in. So this is our group picture. We are 12 students coming from all different countries all over the world. Uh, so this is this is the Royal Academy of Art. Uh, this is where we spend most of our times. Uh, and in this building, we have our own uh, type and media chambers. So uh, type and media studio, which is located right next to Eric and Maria's office. Um, and the layout of our studio looks um, roughly like this. So there are two big rooms uh, in which we have our desks, which are connected with uh, the middle table and the aisle. So this is how it looks like the biggest room. We are eight students having our desks here. And the second room looks like this, where you can also find the, print, the printer and the scanner. Um, we are all assigned to one desk at the beginning of the year randomly. So of course there are some spots that are better than the other, but that's also why we switch um, tables at the second semester. Uh, also, we are all provided with uh, monitors, uh, with our own chairs, with uh, lamps, uh, with uh, cupboards to sort our sketches in. Uh, however, we need to bring um, our own laptop, uh, with, which we connect to, to the monitors. And also we are provided with um, with boards, which you can see in the background, uh, upon which we pin um, work from all of our classes. We also, each of us have one locker and we had an assignment at the beginning of the year where we had to design a stencil and spray it um, on our lockers. So everywhere new students will spread their name also above our previous names. So in a couple of years, there's going to be uh, quite a name mess on every of our lockers. Uh, this is the central uh, aisle uh, in which we listen to most of our classes, uh, except for Francois's uh, stone carving. Uh, we have a big TV, uh, which we use to present our presentations, and also we uh, pin some of our work here. Um, we listen to each other's comments, and we listen to teachers' comments as well. And just in front of the middle table, we have the little patio where we can uh, easily access some fresh air, which is very nice. Uh, there's also a table uh, where we used to have lunch at the beginning of the year, but now the weather doesn't really allow it. So we hopefully going to have lunch again there soon. Uh, this place is also commonly named as the graveyard, as you can see, because all the stone carving from the previous student are there the one that could not uh, be bring back home, basically. Also, in the smaller room, there's a fuzzy table, uh, which was um, donated by a giant type and media uh, family, uh, former students, uh, some studios as well donated. 
so it's uh, good and nice to have some sort of stress relief there. However, it it can be stressful as well sometimes. <laughs> uh, so uh, yes, yeah. this is uh, this is it. Hope yeah. you liked it and uh, good luck with your applications. Okay. Um. So now we continue with the contrast studio that will be presented by Jacob Weiss and he will tell you about one of our biggest assignments during this semester. It was very important and very interesting and I think we learn a lot through it. And yeah, he will try to present most of our works, but yeah, it's it was a big, a big um, screen. Uh, Borian, could you please unshare your screen? Thank you. Yeah, now you. Let's see. <clears throat> Hello. Let me see, is that sharing now? Um, yeah, so this is the contrast. So it's one of the biggest uh, assignments that we have uh, throughout the first semester, along with revival. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really trying to understand the kind of fundamentals of um, the construction of type and getting us to think about how to work within uh, one large family. So we go right back to basics and start off with uh, flat brush calligraphy. And uh, there's a variety of skill sets in the class. So some people already come from quite a calligraphic background. Uh, others haven't, so it's the first time for many of us. Um, and we start out really you know, in the first kind of lessons with trying to train our hands into uh, drawing straight lines and horizontals and then moving into um, yeah <laughs> consecutive ends so you see this is Ben here and he's looking very happy and fresh at the start of the year um, <laughs> before things you know descending into madness um, but yeah it's really good you know we're trying to create muscle memory there and um, yeah, these were some examples of some of our work uh, doing Roman capitals, then also lowercase. And we also uh, experimented with um, some cursive writing as well. So we had uh, and I think we started doing that maybe for about a month or so, quite a while. Um, and that was quite nice in the morning. It was on a Monday, so we come in and it was quite peaceful. And, you know, you just get on with your calligraphy. And I think maybe around October sort of time, we started to uh, do type drawings. And this is where we put into practice uh, what we'd learned from the construction of the broad nib pen and where the thicks and the thins lie within the letter forms and seeing how we can translate that into uh, printing types. So uh, I think uh, next slide here. Yeah, we see some some first kind of um, experiments with creating a family and the, the brief was set into um, we needed to create a bare minimum was uh, a regular contrast, low contrast, high contrast, uh, a cursive and an informal style that would uh, kind of break the mold of this serious text uh, face family. And yeah, we uh, we did that for quite a while. We got into the um, into the swing of, of working, you know, outside of the digital setting for a while and uh, making corrections and uh, then scanning in and printing off again and correcting and then pinning it up and having conversations and Peter would look through them all. So uh, here you can see a low contrast experiment and some annotations from the pinups and the results. Here's a high contrast. Some more sketches for low contrast and a regular and yeah and we we're encouraged also to work quite small at the start so to, to work within a few words and explore the different range and trying to figure out a design space and making design decisions that are based on uh, the whole family so trying to make um, yeah uh, your character work within that kind of uh, those parameters there so here are some more drawings and then also there's Peter there and he has a very acute eye for form, rhythm and proportions so he could spot any kind of inconsistencies and it was also good uh, to start to learn and, and look through his own eyes and, and see how he uh, judges type. So uh, 
is very firm but fair. So it's uh, yeah, there, there's some more pinup stuff. With also lots of proofing at small sizes, obviously because it's supposed to be a text face, so uh, it needs to work small. And uh, yeah, th that was really enjoyable, pinning it up on the wall and then we'd go through and people would share their opinions on it, what could be changed, and then we'd go back and make these changes. And then also thinking about an informal, uh, so, so here are some informal capitals and some final finished work. So we weren't expected to make a 100% finished typeface in the end, so that's not the point, but just to to build enough that we have a coherent set that uh, is a kind of, you know, your the fundamentals um, that you can build upon from thereafter. So here you can see quite elaborate uh, informals as well. And yeah, it was it was quite a big range, although we're we're, you know, the parameters are quite strict in a sense. There's a there's a lot of different results throughout the class. And uh, it was a really good exercise in understanding how to build a robust text face family. Here's some more examples of some of the work from our class. And here, beautiful, very nice uh, informal. And uh, yeah, look at that, wow. <laughs> yeah, a few more slides of that. Um, yeah, that's about it for contrast. Good fun. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. No it's very, I, I hope it was clear what we did. <laughs> <But laughs> I it hope was very, so too. Very interested in process. Yeah, yeah, it was very process. -led. Okay, then let's uh, go to the next assignment. Um, it was a revival that will be presented by Laura and Boom. And they will tell you how we worked with the, some archive materials and did our research. Yeah. So we continue with your notebook then? Or yeah, yeah. you stop sharing, yes. Okay. Okay. Do you want to say some, some words about about yourself, like uh, yeah, I'm Boom. Um, originally from Thailand, uh, and today me and Laura will present our revival studio. So for this, our studio, first of all, we have to find our book, which is printed before 1940s, uh, because it was printed in metal type. After we found our, our favorite typeface from the book, then we start to do the background research about it. Then we try to find the specimens of it, the history behind it, and also if there are some revival which has been done before, then we have to look it up and also like see more about it in details. And in order to do that, we also visit a lot of our archives and also the libraries to find information about it. And most of the time, we can also find the original matrix as well. However, however, the essential, essential part of this class is not about the final result, but about the process and how we approached it. First, we start, we start um, by extracting the typeface from the book. And we do that by scanning pages and um, trying to find the right threshold value for, for the weight of, um, of the text. We continue with uh, drawings. In this example, uh, the drawing is more on the outside to find the, the right shape. Also in this one, there, there can be a different approach to this assignment. Uh, we could explore serifs and stem at weight and width. We document our process along the way because it's very important at the end all this to be in one book. Mm. And we learn about our own process in this assignment. 
Um, and uh, for the final result, we can choose how to interpret the typeface that we chose. For example, uh, in this, uh, in the next slides, you will see people uh, decided to stick closer to the original. Or uh, for this example, you can see that it a little bit driven from the original source because uh, the specimen is a bit lighter, so the final result could also be uh, somewhere in between. Or even we can choose to be inspired by the original source and give it a new interpretations like in this example. So the final outcome is a process book which contain a historical research essay process of digitizations or comparisons or page between and also the comparison page between the original source and our revival. Like in this page, you will see the original source on the left and on your right, it will be it is our revival. That's about Thank it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the talk and um, it was very interesting. Uh, then we will talk a bit about coding and uh, we did it in robot and Borian with Ben will talk about it. Borian and Ben just don't forget to say a few words about yourself because it's your two seconds of fame before you start the presentation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to talk about ourselves now. Yeah, okay. That was not on the menu. <laughs> no, you, you can just say your names if okay. you want. Hey, uh, I'm Ben. That's that's it about me. <laughs> <laughs> you already know Borian. So you already should know I, Borian. Should I share your screen? <laughs> Brought you wow, Borian is so productive. Talk. He do two presentations. Oof. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I start. Again, um, we're talking about the coding class. The coding class is um, taught by Just von Rossum, and it's in contrast to many of the other classes where you basically produce your designs and results by uh, by sketching or writing or drawing. Um, the coding class is very much about computing. And um, because type media is a lot about, um, uh, yeah. Uh, you can share full screen. I think I'm it sharing work. full screen. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we're not <laughs> going to do full screen. Now, is it working? Um, yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to play it manual. Okay. Go, go. So, where were I? Um, so, um, since Working with type often um, involves like kind of like working in very big systems and type media is a lot about um, also being smart about your processes and designing your processes properly. Uh, coding can be an important tool, yet um, not um, a lot of people that apply have a broad knowledge of coding. Um, this class is pretty valuable and what is really good about it is, is that you don't need to have proper knowledge of coding or computing because it will be taught to you from the very beginning. And the major tool we are using in these classes is called Drawbot. That's Drawbot. And that is a um, Python based uh, coding tool with which you can create mostly two dimensional shapes. So you fill in some code and then the program is um, kind of drawing for you. And that starts like really easy. Um, like you can set page sizes, you can set fills, you can set strokes, you can make simple shapes. Um, and from that on, every lesson you get kind of taught basics of coding and um, yeah, you can start making your own projects and become more and more interesting and complex. Like for example, um, what we have here is uh, something that Marta did like in the, um, in the beginning, starting out with making the typeface and then um, putting it into a tile based system that actually scales to your um, to your designs. So that this thing itself is kind of kind of smart and um, you can make stickers that align uh, directly on your format and also which is like I mean this is like a bit more complex stuff but Marta already uh, pulled it out to um, make a make a, an application that is may, maybe known from video gaming so she uh, was even able to um, 
program a little Tetris game. Uh, so that's kind of the range that is possible uh, in Drawbot. So that thing is actually properly working in Robofont. You could play Tetris and procrastinate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what Drawbot is, is a program that teaches designers uh, how to code um, and program. Uh, so basically, uh, it supports ovals, rectangles, uh, Bezier paths, transparency, uh, text files. And this is an example Laura did in which you uh, can see a Bezier path uh, which, which you can do animations like this. So you basically manipulate um, uh, points into, uh, into frames uh, to create uh, an animation. Uh, what is also interesting with Robot that you can do something that is called a uh, pixel letter. Uh, so basically, you can uh, import an external text file, which is uh, basically an ASCII art. So you basically draw uh, a letter with text, with uh, letters, and these are examples how how it can uh, look in the end. So you basically draw uh, functions upon every individual letter from an external text file. You can, can you play both of these? Yeah. Um, yeah, and the good thing, uh, the, the good thing is about you can be really go crazy because um, just is uh, always there for you and supporting you. And if you come to him and say like you have a certain idea, like for example these beautiful examples from Anya, then um, he's always trying to help you out and teaching you how you could basically tackle your idea. And as you can see, you can create a, quite something that is elaborate and um, and can be very free and uh, freaked out just with putting in some code. The next, next picture, like for example, these are more complex versions where you can actually even play with recursive functions and making fractals and really complex structures. And it's just like really easy because you can change the parameters and make a lot of different stuff in a short time once you set up the system. Yeah, that's very great. Also, what is interesting with Robot is that, or actually the Python uh, language uh, and script itself, is that it is also applicable uh, in Robofont. So basically, stuff you learn uh, in, in Robot, uh, you can actually draw within a font editing uh, program uh, and uh, basically draw uh, letters uh, in your um, glyphs, glyph window. Uh, this is an example what how, how Sam used this um, this compat compatibility between those two programs to create uh, various uh, various patterns. And as, yeah, as you can see, the, the the possibilities are pretty broad. Once you try to once you figure it out, like some some of these systems, then you can basically go crazy and do a lot of stuff as may have been shown in this picture here um, yeah, so some greetings from the special effects department. <laughs> um, also, this was um, uh, this was something uh, that was inspired by uh, a manual, a uh, sign painter, painter's manual from 1880s, so almost 150 years old, from uh, Allard Pearson uh, collection in, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, and basically, it's, uh, the robot allows you to recreate some of the some of the stuff like that as well, and to uh, revive some of the old stuff into a uh, digital era area, uh, and to animate them like like this as well. And uh, for the end, this is another example of a pixel letter, uh, upon which um, you can see that every pixel has a variable. Uh, of number of the spikes in each each pixel, and it, once you set like the parameters, the architecture, uh, yeah, the, the possibilities are are pretty much endless. Uh, and if you if you want to check it out, like Drawbot is a free application, so you can download it, and there's a lot of documentation you can teach it yourself. Yeah, check it's it only, out. It only works on Mac, uh, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, but it's Check true. it out. <laughs> Thank so, you. That's that's a Thank you. Okay.
And now we're going to continue with uh, the presentation of uh, the Stone Carving Studio, and it will be presented by Jacob White and Leah Bruno. Uh, which share? Which screen do you want to share? I will share mine. Okay. Can you see it? Uh, yes, it is. Send life. Should I try to the screen or not? Just uh, yes, yeah, you can screen. try. Let's, let's do it. It should work. Okay. okay. Hello again. Yeah. So this is stone carving. Do you want to go yes. start on this? Yes, so we basically start the class with the type work we had with Françoise Berceric, which is our instructor in stone carving. We look, uh, we walk around The Hague and look at some different letters to find some inspiration for the work. Yeah, she's like a personal tour guide for all the architecture and hidden lettering that you wouldn't normally look at through the city. And she, she kind of opened our eyes to all this amazing type in and uh, around Den Haag. Yeah, the, these are the, some of the tools, and here's the, here you see a note from uh, Francoise. Please do not use the chisels for screw uh, for screwdriver. So <laughs> you can see they're very specialised tools: uh, chisel and hammer, and that's about all you need, I think. To start, yeah. start creating. Uh, and she, yeah, in the, the first lesson, uh, she was show us, showing us an example of how to cut a letter R, because the construction of the R gives you all the kind of uh, different cuts that you need to know. So you have like a, a vertical with a serif, but you also have a diagonal and a round shape. And, and these are the three uh, uh, yeah, forms that you need. Yeah. Mm. This is a video of uh, rubbing. So this is the proof we do once we carve. We don't like we do it several times during the process to see actually what are, what is the shape that we carved already. So basically we rub a kind of um, What's, what's the word for the black? Uh, it's uh, charcoal. Yeah. So a bit of charcoal on paper. And then you're really able to understand where the, the contour is. Because sometimes it, with the lighting conditions, you can't quite tell. So that's why we often set up. Uh, we, we work in a room, first of all, right next to uh, all the windows. So we have good light. But in, you know, as the day gets later, then uh, we bring in the um, yes, angle poise yes. lamps as well and, and put them at a side so you get a kind of shadow yeah. on it. So this was one of the first exercises, as Jacob said, the capital R contains all the type of strokes uh, that are the basics one to start with. Yeah, and there's variety and it was important for us also to start thinking about um, the tools that we're doing and not just to bring uh, designs from printing types into a stone carving because uh, but you really have to think about how the tool works and when you're sketching designs uh, also sketch with this center line and understand how this three dimensional thing works because it's no longer a, a 2D letter that you're thinking in three dimensions and some people really explored uh, kind of different um, levels and different types of cuts the most basic one is that V shape yeah um, so this is the room where we carve, so we all have tables in front of window and enjoy the natural light as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. But then after we bring our desk, desk uh, lamp and uh, yeah, use them. You carve. can see all that great posture there. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we started developing after a few months. <laughs> yeah, this was a few slides of the process. So, so the first kind of drawing and how the strokes will work. But we were you know, nothing was, uh, forgive me, set in stone, but uh, you had to kind of think about uh, what you're doing and then make amends and uh, because often you would chip something completely wrong out and you'd have to try and make, work it into the design somehow. So after this first exercise, we are free to use, um, to draw our own letter or word. We can choose the script. Most often we design the letter uh, to fit on the stone Here's a nice picture of Sam with Francoise. Very, very uh, sweet. Giving some Little, feedback. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can see here some process from the drawing, the transfer on the stone, carving and rubbing. Yeah, some more in process shots of us. And we also clamped together bits of wood uh, to, to kind of hold the stones in place when we were bashing against it. Yeah, different reliefs. So this is uh, yeah, yeah, Anya's Anya's stone. 
Um, so there's all types of different uh, cuts you can make or, uh, you know, you can really think about it as a sculpture rather than just a simple carving. Yeah, I think that's uh, about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> what can we say about that? Yeah. And here's us with the class with yeah, yeah Francois also. said down at the bottom, our guru. Uh, and yeah, yeah that's, that's it. about it. Thank you. So we'll uh, move off now. Okay. Yeah, I need to find a room again. Um, yes. Okay. okay. So uh, the next studio will be presented by Ben and Jakob, and uh, they will talk about expansion and responsive form studies. That was a class of Eric. It was very interesting. So, yeah, sharing the screen. You can just show them again. Michael. And you don't even see my, my big smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you already know Ben. I am Jakob. Um, we are talking about the uh, form studies class. With Start Eric. sharing. Um, I do. I okay. am sharing. Yeah, but I. Nice. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, the nice, uh, the nice thing is that uh, while um, a lot of the other classes are like one big project across the whole semester that you're working on, um, the form studies class is more separated into small, uh, smaller, nice assignments that are usually quite compact in size and uh, always produce uh, very nice and varied results. So you can. Uh, more or less use them to experiment with different things and uh, play around a little bit. So like the first thing in the introduction is when um, when Peter Verhoes, for example, uh, teaching us how to do a translational contrast and Eric's first uh, lessons are about the expansion contrast of the pointed nib pen. And here's a picture of a of the uh, yeah, of some type tools that, <laughs> that he invented to simulate it. That is us. Uh, drawing on with a big pointed nib pen in the in the blind book hall before before our studio drawing letters yeah basically it's um after the the broadband pen the other big uh, uh contrast uh, part where basically the the pressure on the paper determines uh the the kind of uh, look uh, you produce <laughs> <laughs> and so then this is kind of also uh, the classroom situation, how that usually looks like. Um, you work on yourself uh, week by week and then during the class um, everything will be hung up and uh, we will talk about the different results and what has been happening and in which areas you should improve. And usually like this is like the other side of, of, of the wall, basically um, us uh, looking at results and um, how it is discussed uh, usually. And also what is happening when we're not reflecting or, uh, or drawing or writing, then um, the, the lessons are always accompanied, accompanied by a little talks about various topics from Eric. They're, they are pretty uh, different in what they are explaining, but it's a lot of like technological and very interesting stuff he has to share. Yes, it's basically kind of uh, trying to fill the gaps between all of the other classes that you would otherwise maybe miss oftentimes. So. Yeah. For example, like uh, variable font technologies or how interpolation works and all, all those kinds of li yeah. nice little things or even like uh, how a printer works. Uh, so yeah. it can be very, very varied and but it's always interesting and always in some way um, relevant to what we are doing. Yeah, or who Rudolf Koch is or <laughs> yeah. how Dutch Christmas works. Why <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus <is> bad. <laughs> Yeah, and from from there, like the, this, is like the next, like uh, of the smaller assignments, um, were were the stencils. Um, Boyan already spoiled them for you. Um, <laughs> throwing shade out there. <laughs> um, yeah, we all made all uh, little stencils for the locker, which was super nice and also very fun. And one of the other really uh, like. Biggest, uh, biggest assignments that you have every week is we're doing type cookers regularly and then hanging them up all together and reflecting on them. Um, like here where we did it outside and was like the assignment is based on making sign type, which has different requirements as you can see here. Yeah, and this is 
how the usual uh, placement looks like and then everybody gets feedback on their spacing. I guess it's also interesting because you all get the same recipe, so everyone is kind of working on the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you can also see that um, there is still one uh, recipe uh, produces quite a lot of different results. And that always opens up interesting discussions about which steps you took and why you made it uh, like the way you made it. And you can really also um, learn from your classmates like this because they might have uh, chosen different decisions and you, that you might not have considered before, which is always very, very nice. Yeah. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, chocolate letters. This, this is like, uh, this was usually the pre Christmas assignment. Um, this year we were a little bit late. So, um, because of the lockdown, uh, we were not uh, able to produce the actual forms. But um, those are basically um, the outside shapes um, for, for the plastic uh, to mold. Um, so you can later fill in your plastic mold with chocolate to have your own little chocolate letter, which is also nice because it um, kind of like the stone carving, only the other way around, forces you to think about uh, letters in a three-dimensional way and maybe in more of a signage way, kind of. So that's also kind of what we mean with um, trying to fill the gaps in what the other classes usually um, might not consider because it's kind of a little bit more removed. Yes, um, the last thing. It's like the responsive letters. It's a nice. Uh, I think we should just go to the, the gallery, right? Because we yeah. are not, uh, we don't have that much time. And it's like, um, yeah, the gallery is always very nice. Uh, you can check it out yourself. Um, it's basically uh, an interpolation between four masters. So it's uh, for, for some students the first time they, they are thinking about um, how interpolation works. And uh, it's always a um, really, really interesting result because they are working in the different dimensions and in time and in space, which is really, uh, really cool. And I think we have we have a great selection here for this year. Yes. Okay. Wrap up. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was a very beautiful presentation. And um, yeah. Now we're going to continue with the uh, Titan language, uh, the so. studio of Peter Bilek, and it will be presented by Marta and Jakob. Yeah. Supposed to be working? Not yet. Maybe Marta wants to show her face before. So. Oh, yes. No, no, but I mean like in general, because general. Uh, the last yes, uh, keynote like... didn't work. Uh, so hello, my name is Marta and I'm from Belgium. Um, I'm still Jacob. still Jacob, nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, yeah. Okay, so we'll be talking about Peter Bilek's class, uh, Type and Language, uh, which I think is a great class because it allows you to not look only at the details of type design, but also look a bit at the bigger picture. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, so what's up often, so I think Peter Bielak really tries to take a step back and uh, lets you think about all of the bigger picture uh, things. So it really tries, um, for example, this is uh, the language um, where you basically try to reflect on um, connotations and it's like basically semiotic connotations of typefaces, so feelings you might associate and how those um, are connected to the style of the typeface and how similar um, visual appearances might um, produce very different feelings across cultures. So that was a very big uh, topic of this assignment of trying to translate the feeling of one typeface in one culture to another typeface that might need a totally different terms, time, a way of visual style basically to do that. So, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, so another thing was um, looking at vertical matrices. How actually those can define a typeface way more than uh, just some smaller details, uh, which was really great to actually talk about these things because it's something that you often kind of forget when designing type. 
Yeah, so we small we wrote a small script uh, just to to have a way to easily play with with those and how they also because they also are heavily intertwined, right? Because changing like the x height of your typeface um, um, immediately necessitates a change uh, in your ascenders and descenders as well, and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's also w one of the like bigger picture things that uh, Peter um, forces you to uh, take a closer look at that you usually uh, tend to forget otherwise um, during the heavy business of just drawing type. Another assignment was uh, looking at type families and how do type families work? Because you have usually just a regular a bold italic, bold italic, and so forth and so forth. But how can you actually also design these families in a different way? Um, so an assignment was to make a typeface, a type family, an interpolation that actually takes these concepts to not just bold and regular, but to totally different styles. I don't know, yeah. what did yeah. you use for um, your... So, so the, um, those were always basically, uh, um, the, the assignment was trying to convey two different uh, emotions in, in one interpolation axis. Really, all right, we really have to pace it up in terms of style. So, I'll just show you. I think we'll just breeze a little bit through uh, yeah. all of the nice. Uh, I think yeah, there were really really nice results. So we'll just show uh, all of the work that we did for this assignment by our fellow students. Yeah, and again, you can see how just uh, one uh, concise task produces a lot of very interesting results because it really tries to get you to think out of the box and uh, do things you uh, usually would not do. Exactly. So you can try to guess which were the adjectives that uh, were used <laughs> <laughs> for these types. Um. Yeah, it's hard because I, I really uh, don't know everyone's uh, anymore. Nice. Yeah. yeah, also uh, we will breeze quickly through this. We already got to the time warning. <laughs> we had uh, Every, every student in Peter's class uh, would choose one topic they wanted to have a little talk about, um, which was super varied. It was uh, from, from Thai to text justification to... Yeah, you could really choose whatever you were really interested about uh, talking to uh, and learning also to your, um, like teaching your other students some of your yeah. knowledge and sharing it. Yeah. And yeah, that was also nice because uh, there were very passionate uh, talks of everyone and topics that they really uh, enjoyed or uh, spent a lot of time thinking about before. Oh yeah, and we have the ugly fonts. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was a really great assignment, uh, just to draw an ugly font and actually think like, what is beauty? Um, what is ugly typefaces? And I think we actually, most of us failed the assignment. Because yeah, I think there were some really beautiful uh, fonts. Beautiful ugly fonts, that, yes. yeah. So here are also some examples uh, across the class that of the projects that we made. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. thank you for the talk. And yeah, thank you. And last but not least, we're going to present the studio of design theory uh, with for, uh, with uh, Peter van Blokland, and it will be presented by uh, Sam and Boom. Yay. We'll have a small uh, or brief introduction to the design theory of Peter van Blokland. Uh, Peter van Blokland's class is a class customized by the students themselves. So, of course, Peter has a broad knowledge about uh, technology, uh, how to run a studio. So these are the topics we wanted to talk about during our classes. Uh, for example, how to run a studio. Um, we talk about or we discuss running a studio as a freelancer or uh, self-employed or to work for a time foundry. 
Uh, also to talk, we talk also about the tech system, uh, how to deal with customers, the different approaches you can use. Uh, and from a general, uh, more uh, business perspective from the type industry. Uh, also, like, according to that previous, actually, it's kind of like week by week, mm -hmm. and then the, the question basically developed from, from one of the other. So after the running studio, also, like, the questions about how to make the quotation. So in order to know that, we all have, have to organizing our design process, like we analyzing this and also the pricing method, discussions about the pricing in the type industry in general. And uh, from that point, we also have a questions about, okay, then how can we improve our design process? And then it's lead to the questions of how to automate and improve our workflow uh, by speeding it up and how to speed it up is like to increase the efficiency in our workflow. And by doing that, uh, we have to implement a feedback loop in terms of design quality. And more than that, we also have to think about our own tools. So to go more in depth, um, we, about, we talk about how to write our own tools. We also had a talk with uh, David Jonathan Ross and Jill um, Pichota, if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, they worked formerly for, uh, she was former quality manager of Type Network. Uh, it was a very interesting talk with David about his use of coding uh, in his workflow. Um, next class, we also started coding ourselves in Robofonts. Uh, the next class, we will talk about coding in Glyphs. Uh, here are some sketches we um, made, either made during our class to talk about how UFO files work, how to use uh, or how compatible Glyphs, Robofonts are, uh, how to use coding, how to plug in. How to talk to the data. How to talk to databases. Mm -hmm. um, this is an example of the coding we did uh, for spacing issues or how to space uh, properly and quickly automated by Python script and Robofonts. Mm -hmm. um, and these, I think this is a very valuable class uh, to have for young designers, more experienced designers. So um, this was boom and my brief introduction on Peter van Blokvens class. Uh, we thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the in our Q and A chat. Thank you. Yes. So first question is: uh, Do you have any specific reason for choosing the word Hangul for the project? I think it was for Peter Bilek. <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah, you can just yes. answer. <laughs> Let's uh, there is a, uh, yeah, there is a reason behind it. Um, that it has a, a good kind of selection of letter forms and uh, shapes that basically have the kind of DNA or the recipe that you could expand a typeface upon. So you have rounds, you have verticals, you have diagonals, um, ascenders, sure. descenders. So, so trying to keep all these kind of letter forms into a very small words so often we're using words that are quite weird made up ridiculous we have like smurfle pigeon i think was one of them New New Tap fish burger. yeah there's there's <laughs> yeah there's there's some strange uh, words yeah. okay thank you thank you uh another question is uh there are three questions, but the first one is, I am from South Korea and I have been working on Korea's traditional type design. I would like to include this in my portfolio for the admission. Is it allowed or is it better to include the Latin type design mostly? Uh, I think it's allowed and it's good to include some foreign uh, scripts if you know them. It's always interesting, but the problem will be more about Latin. There will be some workshops. Uh, Syriac workshop and Arabic workshop, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's always uh, nice if you have some skills in another in other scripts. Okay. Do you think it's good to include my working experiences into my portfolio, or should I make personal works only for this admission? Sorry, can you just say it once more? Do you think it's good to include my working experience in the portfolio, or should I make personal works only? Um, it's okay to include works. Yeah, I would say it's good to include your experience and uh, things that you enjoy doing as well. Not, it doesn't solely have to be type design related. It could be design or, or something else as well. So I think it's good mm. to have a broad uh, 
kind of yeah, aspect to it. Okay. And should I include only the type design into my portfolio, or I can also include everything that I did and would like to look at, for example, 3D motion graphic and other graphic design? Yeah, basically <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. I think it's good to include a broad range of skill sets, uh, other things, because it's not purely just type design. You can go off and a lot of the projects are mm -hmm. orientated in different directions. So I think it's helpful if you have broad range of skills and you can uh, show that within the portfolio. I think it's also that um, while it's mainly about type design, type design really uh, has a lot of tangents uh, to mm -hmm. different kinds of things. So for example, you will have to do a portfolio at some point and that will ob obviously be graphic design. And if you want to, you can do uh, also motion design uh, with especially variable fonts, all that kind of stuff. So I would always approach it from the angle of um, what actually uh, can you bring to the table that might benefit the program and the team as a whole? And I would try to include as much of what you can actually um, help with that as possible in your portfolio. So, and that can be huge tangents. For example, I included a uh, bookbinding into my portfolio because that's something I did quite a lot. And that's something that uh, just regularly happens in type media. Yes. Yeah. Okay. May I know what should be included for the thesis or graduation work if the academic, more theoretical essay is needed or is it more practical focused? I think it's about the next semester. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the microphone we have in the middle, but if you want to answer, maybe you can just come, come closer <laughs> to it. But I think that the, um, if we want to compare it with uh, another uh, academies like in rating it's more practical and maybe um, experimental uh, project for the final project will be but it can be based on any uh, for the beginning maybe on some revivals but uh, then you have to find your own vision and um, do your um, very specific work it shouldn't be a real revival it should be your your work thank you I don't know, maybe you can add something. <laughs> yeah, if you say answer. the question once more, sorry. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, what was the question? question was, it's about the uh, academic side or like the writing? What, what is the final? What should, be, what should be included in the graduation uh, work, basically? Is it a more theoretical essay or is it more practical? It, it's, it's more practical. practical it's practical. really practical. Yeah, yeah. It's, really yeah it's, practical. it's not a really yes. academic program, yeah. even though it's a university. Um, it's really craft and making by hand is in the, mm -hmm. in the core of it. So the end goal is going to be a typeface, yeah. in, in mostly. Yeah. Although people have deviated yeah. from that in the past. It can also be a research or a design. Right, you can right. kind of mould it, but I think the, the, the basics are a, a kind of a typeface family. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. based on the practice, but of course I, I think the, the research is going to be done along the way. It depends mm -hmm. on what you do. Mm -hmm. It really kind of like uh, got to be there, but not in the term of visible. But we are show. also expected to produce like a process book at the end. Yeah. So then yeah. you have to document all your research and then write about that as well. But it isn't, um, I guess it would, it doesn't designate itself as a for formal it. essay. Yeah, yeah, it's not any academic paper. It's no. more like descriptive of your process of right. doing yeah. by hand and, and then going into the digital sphere mm -hmm. and, and uh, about your steps. So more like descriptive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can students with just basic knowledge of typography, uh, for example, bachelor in industrial design, can join the study and be able to follow it? Mm, I think the minimum is just having a graphic design bachelor. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? No, we don't even need that. You no, don't no. even need a bachelor's degree. Need a bachelor's degree. Just needs to be a bachelor. Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. In previous years, there were, for example, also students who came from fashion design and could still yeah. mm -hmm. still able to do yeah. very impressive projects. Okay. So mm -hmm. it depends on if you have your interest and you are still wanna continue. It's it's possible. Basically, you have to show in your portfolio that you are interested to to do this and um, yeah, just show work that is uh, related to type design or letters. Uh, OK, uh, another question is, um, should I have 
coding knowledge to understand the classes? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, should you, maybe, I mean, but it, 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 it would, would it definitely help. help, but it's not, it's not necessary. The classes are no. especially made for people who have no knowledge and the, the teachers will, um, the teachers will pretty much fit on what the average, what your average level of coding is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you really don't get it, just is, is so helpful in kind of uh, showing you how to how to use it and stuff. Yes. And in, even if you aren't that proficient in it, there's you'll learn way more than uh, uh, than you did before. Like mm -hmm. it's quite a steep, yeah, learning curve. You learn. It's yeah. draw, draw, but it's quite simple in the end. We were, I think, all kind of afraid to dwell into it, but once you get the basics. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to, to dig into it. Uh, so basically, I don't think. Um, and we also like share knowledge as well exactly. in the class. So, exactly, yeah. so it's quite uh, yeah easy to get things done or you can ask help from people and, and we all help each other That's in true. ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next question is, may I ask how many candidates apply each year and how many uh, mm. continue to the interview stage? I no, we don't know. We don't know. know. <laughs> it's a big secret. About twice as much as they were uh, approximately. Hmm. Maybe that's something that the teachers. Yeah, yeah that's something that very good. I would have an answer. Yeah, we don't really have the statistics. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, know the if next? it's a cover I think mm. uh, that information uh, is likely to stay in internal. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, we don't know. Basically. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these That's are public right. on the university websites, but I don't know about. I don't think. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So basically, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> but I'm sure that maybe the teachers will elaborate, or, or maybe it's just top secret. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't think you should focus on that. It's primarily, uh, you know formulating eloquently your portfolio. I don't think you should be concerned about quantity of people applying. Um, the next question is, um, how much time do you get an answer? And I think after application, yes? Quite some time this year, I don't know, it's kind of different, but it was like you apply with your portfolio mm -hmm. in end of January, mm -hmm. was it? And then I got the answer we got at the beginning yeah. of May, or yeah. the, the first answer that we are in the video call. And after that, it's even like two or three more weeks after yeah. the video call, and then you get the mm -hmm. final answer. So that is, there's quite some time that will pass between. Yeah. Yeah. I think it varies from year to year mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but however, when you hand in your portfolio, I think you have some time to to relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, good to shelve, shelve it after you've handed in, so you're not overthinking it for for those months. Just mm -hmm. to kind of submit, forget about it, and then yeah, hopefully you'll you'll get a, an answer back. And then again, when when the results come in, uh, it's good to start thinking about. Uh, finding a place yeah. yes, as, the Hague in case you get accepted. Exactly. You should do that as early as possible because the Hague is a hellhole for finding a place. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the market well, is the question, nobody asked, <laughs> but super competitive. Yeah. Good answer. For, uh, <laughs> Why did you get an apartment? Don't you get into that? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, next question is, is it a problem if most of my portfolio is not in English? Yes. yes. Um, uh, you mean like the notations and stuff? They they should be in English, but yeah, if yeah, the, yeah. the letters yeah. and the examples you're showing are not, not in English, I think that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. So it's there's, okay. Not, in, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. always good to be text. Uh, important to have some descriptive text in every project and that should be in English. And that's even better if it's weaved inside of the project. So it's not only like a big chunk of text in the beginning, but you also like Mm -hmm. uh, describe your steps in a few sentences. Yes. Are there any are, you, are there any courses that focus on vernacular typography specifically? If anybody knows what this means. Um, vernacular, I think. Like yeah, far more informal uh, signs. Uh, letterings, this kind of thing. I think I would put I, in I would this say category. Very much. Not if you I want know. to, then you yeah, can. If you is that your interest, then you can find your way. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's many other places where you can be more like vernacular than here. 
Yeah, it's a it super good starting yeah. point, and there has been lettering people in the past year, like Ken Ramirez, mm -hmm. for example, who are now teaching also lettering uh, courses. Right there. So, so you can even build your final project around that if you're into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we all come from different starting points as well. Some people are more from a calligraphic background, some people mm -hmm. from a more graphic design background. So everyone brings their own interests into the course and the, you can find your own or navigate your own course through that. Um, OK, um, there is one more question about the accommodation. Any tips for finding a place if we're close to this topic? <laughs> First of all, there is some kind of solidarity between the years. So if you if you get accepted, feel free to contact us or contact Maya and people will no. try their best to help. There is a type house that is rented to type media people and is always kind of given to the next year. Mm -hmm. So there's already like some places you can go and also it's good to, if you get accepted, get in contact with us because some will leave The Hague after the year and may directly can leave their room to you. And also there's Facebook groups for general key yes. studying. So yeah. I mean, we also and the teachers will do our uttermost to, to help you with that if possible. Yeah. So you should contact our students straight if possible. So the, the program itself is not taking care of uh, handing the places uh, between the years. Yes, also I think you should really um, consider going to The Hague if you want to search for a place mm -hmm. because uh, most of the time they will be only given to people who actually show up for uh, yeah, for the showcase of the room and if you're not there, you basically have no chance at all to uh, actually getting a place because demand is very high and uh, they really want to know you personally everywhere basically if they want to give you the place. Yeah, I got my place through Geste Group, Geste group uh, by showing my face in July and then in August uh, they had a place for me. So it's, it's good to think of coming. Okay. Um, next question is, uh, first of all, thank you for your presentation. Yes. We're very happy that it's figured out somehow. Uh, are there classes in the first and second semester the same? No, no, no they're not. So the first uh, semester is really uh, with the classes, as we talked about, and the second semester will be focused more on a personal project that you can choose and um, do what you want to do actually to make your final project for the semester. So one big project, I think. Exactly, well the first semester is very split um, into different things and very different kinds of uh, things you're working on. The second one is really mainly you have just one thing you focus on the whole time mm -hmm. with, with a little bit of uh, side by side here and there, but way more focused than the first semester. Right, and we have the uh, we still have the same tutors, and they'll come in as normal. But then they will we'll be talking about our final projects, and they'll help, they'll help us uh, with that, mm -hmm. give us feedback, and have sessions. Um, there is an easy question about how um, should we bring our own computers for program? I yes. would say that yes, yes, definitely. Probably there are some yeah. screens that you can connect with uh, your laptop. Uh, to have a bigger size to work, but you have to bring your own computer and better if it would be MacBook because yeah. Dropbox works with MacBook and Robofond is just for MacBook. Yeah. Nice. And Google. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Other brands are available. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's good to but not really. <laughs> if you have another keyboard than those that can be bought in Netherlands, it's good to bring your own keyboard from your home country. Uh, maybe also even two, because you might need one in the class and another at home if you're working from home. Yeah, but it really depends on how you usually work and what's comfortable for you. Um, next question is uh, about the coding again. Is it hard to learn? I would say that we already answered this question. Yeah, it's, it's not hard, hard to learn. Uh, First it depends. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> as, as with all things. <laughs> yes, we already answered it. Uh, first thing first, amazing work. It seems that the pro program brings out the most creative part of you. The presentations are beautiful and really informative. Thank you. My question is how many classes do you have? Does anyone manage to combine the studies with a job? No, no. Uh, yeah, it's not possible. If you're thinking about working besides, don't. 
don't do that. The classes will take like all of your time and all of your attention. So all of um, you. <laughs> if you if you if you're thinking about working besides 10 to 15 hours in a week, don't. No. Just you will be here and you will be fully invested into it and tell all your friends you're off the grid for a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, right? it's true. It's, true. it's yeah. definitely like this and even more than you think. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's really possible to freelance beside uh, working for the year. Yes. And it's also not uh, encouraged by the people, uh, mm -hmm. the, the teachers, and, and it's not really Because you want your full focus on the course and it's it's such a it's just one year as well and there's so much to fit into uh, mm -hmm. one year so you really need to have that time available to uh, to be in every day and focus just on on the project yeah and if you get accepted you also want to spend all your time in getting the most out of this year so working during the time wouldn't be uh, mm -hmm. it would be kind of a waste of time if you can just somehow make it financially mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, on that note, it might be a good time uh, to start saving uh, now, basically, mm -hmm. if you haven't already. Because, of course, studying here is also expensive. So um, being able to lay a little bit of money on the side so you have it during the year is definitely a good call. Or take a study loan just to get over right. the year and then grind afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> With all our new, new lent skills. Good tips, yeah. good tips. Um, I was curious about uh, how is a week in the life of Tech Media student organized? The week. Yes, the week. how the week? Well, it depends as well because it's changed so much from like the start of the year <laughs> until now. So it's it's difficult to pick one week. But it was an usual, usual, usual timetable. Yeah, we so have to say the difference post and pre so autumn break. We have like a, yeah, most days we have always a class. Some days we have two classes, like morning and afternoon. Sometimes we just have a morning and then we have the afternoon free. So there's there's usually time allotted into the week where you have time to work on some of the assignments and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So basically free time is not your free time. It's like yeah. free time <laughs> it's <laughs> for the next day. Yeah. And it's run like this the whole week. Like. Yeah, the studio is also open from I think is it eight o'clock um, and eight 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 or ten till ten. In the but evening, usually we so. stop, we are here till ten. But we are not from eight. I think we are from nine here usually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the thing is also uh, usually uh, classes start at nine, so everyone will be there uh, in the morning, and then afterwards, uh, usually more or less everyone will stay uh, during the afternoon mm -hmm. and work the whole time. So the studio is more or less always full uh, of people working uh, the whole day. That's kind of how you can imagine it. Yeah, six days a week. So basically you, you really need the Saturday to get week. your assignment done. And yeah. Sunday, Sunday is, if you're good, Sunday is free. No, Sunday is like cleaning and washing the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and Making of, food for next week. Exactly. Yeah, doing groceries because yeah. you won't have time during the week for that. But that's the good thing about The Hague. Um, you can actually buy stuff on Sundays. So that's uh, ah, good yeah. to know. Not like yeah. in Germany. Yeah. It's in everywhere other than Germany. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is, uh, thank you for your presentations. If the program focused only on latent writing system, I think we already answered this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right, so can we, can we just yes. say it again? Yeah. If yeah, this person yeah. didn't uh, hear. We already did. We said it is. Yes. Can we repeat? <laughs> <laughs> so just it is um, focusing on Latin writing mm. script. Latin script, yeah. We have two but workshops. We have the workshops yes. Right? Oh, yes, we have so we workshops. Have, we've had Cyrillic already. Next week we start an uh, Arabic workshop and we also have a uh, Korean, Hangul. Yeah, Korean. People um, who yeah. are fluent in another script have made like bi scriptural uh, final project, but uh, usually it's focused on Latin and yeah, teachers, you should have yeah. the Latin, I think, mm -hmm. always, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And the uh, teachers can't uh, really consult you about some languages that they are not familiar with. So it can be part of your project, final project, if you are very uh, interested in your own writing system, but it's not the basic for the program. Yeah, it's also just not a good time to try to learn another mm -hmm. uh, uh, writing system. Mm. Yes. Because, like, if you uh, consider picking up like Arabic, for example, for TED Media, uh, you probably won't be able to do it because it's just too much and also because you don't have the people necessary to really help you with that. Yeah. Uh, do the assignment focus on type design in silos 
or are there any additional interdisciplinary projects to explore the various application of typography? For example, in designing branding or packaging with typography? No, we don't have. Not particularly, but I guess that we use certain skill sets like for uh, you know, the revival book or something. So uh, typographical knowledge and typesetting and uh, graphic design background. Um, I think there will be a little bit more in the second semester about specimens and stuff, mm. typography, but that's about it. It's it's mm. really not a lot, and it's not what you bring with you already, uh, than what, and what you will pick up on the side. But there will be there will not be a course like that. Daniel Raposa will teach us during the second year of typography yeah. a bit. Mm. Second semester. Okay. Yeah. Second, second semester. semester. Yeah. 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 One year. Very intense one year. So. Yeah, that's like six. <laughs> yeah, older six years. years. No, 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 no. Uh, two years for a compressed one year. <laughs> were the classes all in person or were there restrictions because of COVID? Yeah, we had some um, COVID cases. Fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it, it started uh, live. Uh, we were in studios for some time, but at some point we we went uh, online for some time, uh, and then we went back to the studio, and then the lockdown uh, hits uh, in late December. So it's kind of on and off. But so it has been mostly in it, the studio, which yeah, has been really great to be here. The, the KBK has this not a, like a special uh, special thing going on that you can actually, even if some other things in the Netherlands are locked down, you can still often access uh, the art school because it's, uh, it's uh, the education is practical. Right, it's a technical school, so yeah. It's yeah. under yeah, the rules here, then it was allowed to be open. But, yeah. but nobody Regular can universe. nobody can like yeah. like make Regular. a prognosis yeah. if you will be in lockdown yeah. next exactly. year or not. But Difficult I think what can definitely be said is that they definitely try their hardest to yeah. keep mm -hmm. it open for yeah. as yeah. much yes. as possible. And if there is like any choice um, they have in keeping it open, it will be open. Uh, mm -hmm. It's only like if they're actually forced. And we are really lucky in that regard because the um, year before us uh -huh. had a way, way harder time with COVID than we did. Mm -hmm. They were closed for way, way longer and they were separated for quite some time and all the stuff. So we were really lucky and hopefully it will stay that way for next week, mm -hmm. next year as well. Yeah, but I think that uh, during the last year, well, they already learned how to teach online. And all these problems kind of run, so mm -hmm. it should be better yeah. anyway. Yeah, it was a quick yeah. transition. They, yeah. they already knew like how to operate it, so yeah. So we could quickly transition into online lessons. Mm. Yeah, and Dutch are quite chill about the pandemic. <laughs> yes, general. a little bit too chill for, for my taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically yeah. the the general mindset is that life has to go on even though there is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But, however, I think here in the studio we are kind of careful about that uh, and in, in the school mostly, I would yeah. say. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, and how does the weekly studying schedule for you guys look like? Do you uh, still have a side hustle or do you spend time outside of class to work on your projects? Uh -huh. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> there, there is like no uh, time outside of class, kind of a little but bit. It, it oftentimes it does feel like it. Um, you you have time to do like sports and stuff uh, to to do some recreational things. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but there is a lot outside but, of time to get through. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard, and you have to really force it. And if you uh, don't aren't really strict about it, type media will just swallow all the time you have, and you will be yeah. just spending all the time in yeah. the studio. So you Absolutely. have to look after yourself in that regard, because if you don't, uh, it will just take over. And yeah. you have to start thinking how to prioritize as well, yeah. certain mm -hmm. workload and how to organize your time. But you and Anya also, also, yes. also do the climbing. Yeah, we do climbing, but yeah. we have to really find those two hours like, and really like be determined to mm. go even once a week. So it's not that there is a lot of free time. I would say for me at least, I've quit Instagram for this year and I never watch Netflix either. <laughs> uh, and still, I think my time is between balancing by uh, listening to the lectures, finding time to work on my own stuff, sleeping and taking care of myself a bit on the side. So mm. those are the things that I have time to do. But it is good to try and have enough time to rest as well. So mm. I often try and have like a, still an evening 
back home as well to unwind and stuff. So, but it, then it, again, it requires meticulous planning to, <laughs> <laughs> to do so. But it is it, there's possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you should get like your basic routines right, so then you're a bit free to to find time for uh, mm. even like some sports. Mm -hmm. What you want to do? Design the process. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it's also uh, important to say that uh, the the, sty the time that you spend in the studio is you're not just working. You're also hanging out with people, and uh, the group is also kind of your social life. You have in the Hague, and you're talking and you're playing football and all that kind of stuff, having fun together. So it's not like you're just sitting on your desk alone uh, for the whole time. It's, it's, it's actually fun to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. How does your timetable look like? How many days per week do you have classes? And what does a typical day at Tech Media look that's, like? That's what I think we already I think we are just having that. Okay. What are your uh, tips for a portfolio? Process. Yeah. Process. Yeah. Process. Yeah. Process. Process. Less finalized, finished uh, Draw, drawing things, but the drawing, the process, because that's what the teachers want to see, mm -hmm. like how you're going to. Yeah. develop within and yes. you know it's so process driven that mm -hmm. that's don't the important think, yeah. stuff yeah and don't think of showing only like projects <laughs> but you can make like uh different kind of categories for sketches for type cookers if you're familiar with this tool mm, that's it's type cooker yeah. uh yes, yeah, yeah i think so and then that's calligraphy the sketches so it's not only like commercial project or our finalized and also to, to annotate throughout the slides as well so mm -hmm. exactly because you know the teachers are going to be reading it also think about what they're going to be reading it on which is probably maybe like a macbook or you know think about the format and the size and uh, yeah make sure that all your thoughts are annotated and uh, the way you're thinking because that kind of they want to look inside your head in a way so with annotation <laughs> you mean that there's a bit of text yeah comments and on and what you're thinking about maybe also critiquing your own work thinking what or, or trying to identify what doesn't work about it mm -hmm. maybe that's quite important mm. Mm. yes i think the, the only big part that would be missing for me is i uh, think about it type media is a group of 12 people and they always try to get into as uh, the, as diverse as possible in, in any way so to really think about okay what um, what special thing do you bring to the table uh, that may, might also be totally uh, outside of actual type design mm -hmm. and also include that and really say okay this, this is something that that i can offer and i would also like to share uh, with the group basically uh, because i think that's uh, uh, very valuable for you to have mm -hmm. okay is there an age limit for applying to master type and media so i am the oldie of the group my beard is turning white at the moment <laughs> i'm 36 uh, and there has been older people the previous years people who have kids i think people even over 40 at some point uh and on the other hand uh, uh, yeah i'm the, I'm the young youngest people here as well were you um, the records for the no, no i was okay. there i was uh, 21 uh, this year I think yeah, they really, really try to find a group that's Bowen. very varied and balanced in age and skill set and yeah. in everything. Yeah. Okay, and how long does the program program last? One year. From, from September to June. Uh, July. 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 Yeah. The first week of July, we graduate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. an exhibition and uh, the, the diploma ceremony. Uh, but throughout the year, you would have, I think, three bigger uh, breaks: uh, the autumn break, the winter break, uh, or the Christmas break, and the uh, spring break. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the spring break is more for working, I think. I think so too. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I, I completely on that. You shouldn't plan a one-week vacation yeah. for that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it. Um, next question. Uh, may I know if the applicants shall prepare with the concept of the final tech phase? Could you please tell more about it? In what depth the final thesis should uh, relate to the final tech phase project? I think it's not necessary to prepare it before the application. 
because no, no, you, you can have some ideas to... and it's good to have them, but you can switch uh, during first semester. You yeah. will have so many new uh, things to change your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will learn so much every week during the first semester and start seeing more and uh, then you should keep your mind open in February and still early March to think of what the final project could be. Mm -hmm. uh, so you should bring in to the table several uh, questions or ideas. ideas. Yeah. Several, several ideas for that. So of course you can think of the ideas, but you should definitely not cling to them. Mm -hmm. And also, um, if you want to have a proper idea what it could look like, there are all the uh, graduation type phases from the last years are online. So you might mm -hmm. want to check out the mm -hmm. last, last 10 years and then you get a proper idea and what kind of span you can actually design. Yeah. Um, yeah, is it possible to apply via my portfolio website, linking it in the PDF? I, I don't think that should be the only thing, mm -hmm. but I am sure that there in the portfolio application mm -hmm. form, you can also add the link to your website yeah. and you can always also include it um, in uh, in your PDF, but I don't think you can apply without a PDF with just a link to the website. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's enough. And you also want to make it as easy for the tutors to see as well. So, uh, so I think that's why it's best to have most of what you want to show already in the PDF. Yes. Yeah, the also, teachers, yeah, they are going through a lot of PDF, so it's good to visualize everything, and also to keep in mind that they are you are not there to explain them. Uh, when they're looking at the portfolio for the first time. Yes, also you really want to have a portfolio that's focused on type media. So you don't want to send your general portfolio that you do like for clients or mm -hmm. everything. They, mm -hmm. I think they really want to see uh, something that was special, specially made for, for this occasion. And maybe something not finished that you wouldn't publish on your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. also that. Yeah. And also think about the more technical, but the, the file size as well, because if you go and do way too much, then you'll have to compress that <laughs> far too much and lose image quality. So just think about the requirements as well. Start early. Start early with the portfolio. You can always upload it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is, you can already upload what you have now and change it out later, so mm. no, nothing goes wrong. You can always yeah, override yeah. it uh, in the in the forum, so nothing goes wrong, and so you're not like me at. 10 minutes past deadline, trying to upload a portfolio and like <laughs> sweating profusely because that totally happened. Uh, <laughs> also, also, if you, for example, have um, animated type of video files you want to submit, you could um, also contact Maya in special cases and could send that to her if that's not able to upload someone. So mm -hmm. that should be a uh, in any case, don't attach video in PDF. It is possible, but it's it's <laughs> so an external link would would do the job. Okay, are there any good scholarship possibilities? Well, I think uh, if you come from outside EU, like first time study in Netherlands, you get a thousand euro for the first year, but that has to be applied. Mm, I don't know. Uh, there, there was. Um, you have to check because it really it depends on the country where you come from. Yeah. There are some some scholarships for people from UA and not so many uh, for people from uh, outside. Uh, but there are a few maybe for accommodation and they change from year to year. There um, there are some. They are not connected with the KBK, but they are general uh, Netherlands programs. And you can, and it's also very good to check it before you already receive the answer from Type Media because they have some, uh, some deadline. deadlines that are before your application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, start searching for that. Uh, yes, I, I also did my bachelor studies in The Hague, and during that time I got something called Holland Scholarship. Mm -hmm. So you could check that. I don't know how that works for a master program. You can also look for another other uh, possibilities for the scholarship. For example, I have a scholarship from Bulgaria from an organization there. So maybe in your area or your region, there is some kind of uh, scholarship or support for students. Yeah, if you have a graphic designers association for your country, for example, that's a place to apply for a scholarship as well for this year. You can um, um, Applied as a research into typography or type design, uh, 
or, or as a project, mm -hmm. this is this is one thing to think about. Okay. Uh, I am interested in going there uh, on 2023 to the, uh, 2024 because I need time to save money. But should I send my portfolio for them to start to know my work already? I think mm -hmm. that's a good idea usually, but uh, keep in mind that there's a limit to how often you can apply. So it's kind of yes, I think you mm -hmm. can only three apply. Times. I think you can only apply three times and after that uh, oh. you can anymore. Really? really? I, 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 I definitely yes. heard that, but. Was he still kind of like, yeah, because yeah. I mentioned that on my interview, and I think Maria said that that's not the case. Okay, I don't I think that it should be. Case. Well, maybe the tutors can yeah, write in the chat. I'm, I'm definitely the sure we heard it, but maybe we, Eric can chime in for that. Nice um, urban man. Who knows? <laughs> 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 but in general, um, I feel like a lot of the people applying apply for the second time when they get in. So uh, I think I heard it for some years it might it was 50-50 uh, uh, of uh, first time applicants and second time applicants. So um, it also shows a lot of determination if you are applying for a second time because mm -hmm. it shows that it's something that you really want. So um, if you already have something, it might be a good idea to already send it in. I, I would mm -hmm. probably do it if I were you. Yeah. Um, after uploading the portfolio, can I update the file? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Before the deadline, you can update it as much as you want. Not yeah. after the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, but after, <laughs> not after the yeah. But the deadline is soon. There is a question about our backgrounds and what we did before we started the master. Uh, the person already made a master in typography and book design and finished with a modern type face, but um, is still thinking doing a second master in type design. Is that a good idea? <laughs> Other people did that as well. So yes, 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 yes. It's definitely a good idea. I also have two bachelor degrees and one master degree already. Um, and yeah, it if there's a special skill you can bring to the table, especially if it's typography, that's like amazing. I mean, if you're interested in type design, then yeah, it's it maybe some some interesting things, especially in this program that you want to learn, then you can apply. And it's also my case because I made um, as a master uh, radiation project a typeface as well, and then I apply here, and I can't say that it's it was <laughs> it was unnecessary. It's very interesting anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think there is always something to learn. Some people here were already working as type designer before, and we are still all learning a lot with the mm -hmm. classes. So, yeah. You could also come from School of Life. That's okay as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, once okay. again, it's not an academic uh, program, but more like about drawing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And we all come. Uh, for the Q and A, so if you have more questions, please add them, and uh, we're gonna wait a few more minutes. And then but if you if you will have questions later, you can just find us in a social media by Tech Media account. You can find our private accounts and ask. We are always ready to answer mm -hmm. and give you some tips or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Foosball. <laughs> <laughs> For lunch. Well, that's, that's why a little longer. So if there's more Ooh. questions, like, share, subscribe. Someone wants to say something about having a relationship during the program. Oof. It's possible. Oh, no. <laughs> it's putting us up on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want? No, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. Okay. It's, it's okay. Should we, then yeah, thank yeah, we'll, you so we'll, much for your time and for uh, being here. There is one more question, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah. One question. One question. We already answered the um, question. I don't know why. I, no. Um, it would. Yeah. Let's read it. Yeah. Is it a problem that I don't have Latin typefaces in my portfolio and? If I have good typefaces in Arabic and I'm interested in learning Latin type design, um, I have Latin calligraphy and lettering, but no, yeah, no uh, Latin typefaces. I think that's totally fine because it just shows the interest that that's something you want to pick up and learn. 
and I, I, I don't think that is a problem for you. Yes, maybe a good uh, a good um, thing to practice a bit in type cooker just for yourself and uh, also to show that you have some skills in uh, um, that you know something about contrast, about letter construction and this kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it will be a case of uh, drawing in Latin, but it's, mm. it's, it's okay to apply. It, uh, for me, it sounds like a really good basis. If you have Latin calligraphy and lettering, it's, it's as important or even more important than having finished typefaces in Latin already. So definitely go for it. Okay. Okay, thank everybody and good luck to <laughs> good luck. Yeah, good luck good to luck. you for the application. Yeah. Thanks for joining <laughs> today. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.